Welcome back everyone to Animal Crossing episode 17 with me Austin John plays awesome I just looked at my analytics and I think it's funny because ever since I started covering Animal Crossing My female viewership of my channel went from 12% to 26% So shout out to all the new viewers and subscribers to the channel. Thank you so much for being here So you know how I do the series as like half live and half narrated well I've been doing too much live and not enough narrated, so the videos are getting a little behind my actual daily progress. Normally I pick up every video around 7 p.m. the day before and go forward from there and then I stop between noon and 4 p.m. Well today is starting off at 10.30 a.m. so I'm... I, I need to cover a lot of ground here. Yesterday, while I was doing my morning exploring looking for people who visit my island, I found CJ. He's a fisherman influencer, and he's really obsessed with his phone and streaming and influencer -y stuff. Kim Kardashian would really be proud of him. He tasks you with finding three fish of the same size as the fish that he mentions. So you need to know the size of the fish that he's talking about, and then you need to identify the size and then catch three. There's no time limit to how long that takes, but it has to be three in a row also you can't miss a catch as i will reset your counter for me it was a size two so it wasn't too difficult also funny enough during this i saw a decreased spawn rate in size three fish aka eggs so i had that going for me which was nice like flick he can make you a model of whatever fish that you have three of and i made a really reckless decision of giving him three string fish for a model and I sold the rest of whatever I had in storage. That earned me 120,000 bells. Great. Then I went to resident services. I got my daily miles bonus. I bought the last pathway that I needed from my collection, the dark dirt and a Nook Miles ticket for an island. I now have all of the paths and I'm very excited about that. There is no Miles achievement for that. I wanted to go to an island and possibly fish up some big boys so I could sell them off to CJ for one and a half profit. And for daytime Northern Hemisphere April, my best options are a blue marlin or a tuna off of the pier or an ore fish anywhere. After about 20, 25 minutes here, it was mostly just size three, probably eggs. There was one size six, but I was too slow because I was used to fishing up sea bass, which are very forgiving. I bought a plot to move Kiki's house and a stone staircase as I want to keep working on villager mountain over here. I moved Kiki's house back next to what was Walt's house and placed the stone staircase going up to my base. And since I have a lot of wood, ladies, I decided that I would just shake trees today for possible furniture drops instead of hitting trees for wood and I got a tankless toilet nice now I could get rid of fruit in my body awesome also fun fact the eggs that we're collecting right now those aren't like animal or chicken or hard-boiled eggs or even Easter eggs which are typically hard-boiled chicken eggs that are then painted these are candy eggs inside of wrappers I forgot exactly where I saw the text but that is what we are collecting and eating. While I was running around shaking trees more than a senator shakes hands at a charity auction, Julia came over to me and gave me a mini fridge for some reason. And I decided it was time to finally build a kitchen in my house. This game has been pushing me toward it for so long. This is how many kitchen things I've gotten so far. Nothing for an arcade. Barely anything for like a bedroom or I have some shower stuff, but I definitely have way too many kitchen things I could get changed in the freezer <laughs> That is very strange and a mini fridge I could also get changed in the fridge nice I then also modified the kitchen layout a little bit because well it's only me eating here since I'm a lonely bachelor then I brought all the gaming tinkering electronics toys and music to the basement because I'm gonna make an arcade then I decided I would fish up all the remaining fish in the month since there were only two left the neon tetra from a river and a killfish from a pond originally I thought it said krillfish and I was confused because those live in the ocean that's what whales eat out of my big hole I Island, I only have one pond so I experimented and I learned that I could just section off my river into little chunks right here and that makes them into ponds the difference between a pond and a river is that a river either touches the ocean or it touches a waterfall and it has moving water ponds are stale water then I learned something magical that a river needs at least I think three or four spaces across to allow spawns I'm pretty sure it's three so I made a bold decision 
that all of the rivers in my town I would now make into too wide, so they're considered a stream, not a river. Fish cannot spawn in streams. I could decorate my island with water wherever I want and still have my third level river being the great place for fishing, that I could just run back and forth and reload spawns. The less spots for fish to spawn, the less running around I have to do, and you guys know how much I love optimizing things, and maybe it's just a cover up for me being lazy. Sadly, near bridges, it has to remain four wide, so it's just a matter of letting it flow nicely between the two and four wide. Occasionally, I do need to run to a bridge to despawn fish. Then I decided I wanted to expand my town area. Now that I have the power to move water and decorate with water wherever I want, I could build a nice sectioned off area to the northwest. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna expand my Zen garden and maybe down the road put some dope fossils there. Most of all, keep in mind that I only have a maximum of eight bridges anywhere on the island and eight staircases. So this is gonna be a flat area and it's gonna be surrounded by that second level. I then spent a few hours editing and uploading yesterday's video and I decided to keep my fight stick controller with turbo on A while holding my slingshot. In that time, I got nine sky eggs and nine presents uh, for a total of 14,000 bells, two bunny floor DIY, a board game and five clay. The only DIY I'm missing for the event is uh, only the vanity, great. Well, it's after 7 p.m. and I felt like last night we were so close to figuring out Tarantula Island and someone hit me up on Twitter. Their Twitch name is HeadGames33 and they sent me a clip that they had some ideas about how giant water bugs spawn. So I'm going to try that out tonight. Also, yes, I'm from New Jersey. We don't say water. We say water. W-A-D-D-E-R. Is there enough comments about it? Because I feel like every video, there's a comment section talking about how Austin says water. It, it's how I say it. It's how everyone in New Jersey says it. All right? Get over it. It's a New Jersey thing. Oh, where are we going? Where are we going? River and Pond Island, my old friend. Perfect. First thing I'm doing is I'm digging it up floor two so nothing can spawn there. Next, I'm cutting down all the trees and I'm going to be digging out holes one to two deep along the entire river. That means along the north side, the south side, east and west sides when applicable. And I tested this for exactly 60 minutes and here are my findings on how to farm tarantulas in April for the northern hemisphere with the new water bug situation. The giant water bugs for the spawning algorithm looks to where a player can stand, including the half spaces, meaning like the slanty diagonal ones. Even though you can't stand there, that's still considered a standable area. Then it calculates two spaces out in every single direction from every standable point. The only thing that can make something not standable is it being water or if you have a hole dug there. It then sees all the horizontal and vertical water and land meeting locations and it cancels everything out except for those. That is where a water bug can spawn. When you see a water bug, he's going to leave his docked location, he's going to move two times, and then return back once. The place that it docked is always the place that it spawns at. The water bug spawning algorithm also ignores height changes. So if there's a space open on the first floor and there's a waterfall, there's a chance that it could spawn on the second floor. It's just something that might happen. How the water bugs work in the grand equation of things. Every destination island, there's a bug mob cap of five. There is a water bug mob cap of two, and there's an underground bug mob cap of three. There is no way to completely stop water bugs from spawning because there is no island with completely straight water sources. So the whole point of this is we're going to choose where the water bugs spawn. Meaning that if you see them dock on the left land or the right land, it's super easy to see them and super easy to catch them. Meanwhile, if they dock on the south side of a river, then they're much more difficult to see. So after you dig all your holes, chop all your trees, break all your rocks, etc., you run around the island and you're going to have zero to two ground encounters open. The ground encounters being the beetles, the wharf roaches, and the tarantulas. Then eventually, there's not going to be any open. And if there's no open whatsoever, you're now at zero ground encounters. That means you have two water bugs. You have to catch one or both of them, and then boom, you can open up ground encounter spaces. And then all you have to do is just repeat this over and over and over again. If you happen to see a water bug just hanging out, grab it, because you're going to have to grab it eventually. 
After you repeat this process over and over, you're going to be able to farm tarantulas slightly slower than we were before. Previously, I was getting tarantulas every 90 to 120 seconds. Now I'm averaging 185 seconds or 3 minutes, 5 seconds for every tarantula spawn. And this isn't going to work on every island. Spiral Lake Island, you're going to have some difficulty because of how thin the land masses are. Fish Pond Island, it doesn't really work at all because of the diagonal land masses that are considered spawnable standing space. So essentially, you're not going to be able to cancel any locations from them to spawn. Long story short, all you need to do, catch the water bugs, and then you're going to find tarantulas. The more water bugs you spawn, the more tarantulas that can spawn. Simple as that. You never have to touch the ground crickets. And to top it all off, not only am I walking away with an inventory full of tarantulas, but I also have a lawn flamingo. I call that an absolute victory. I spent a few hours with a small group of people on my Discord testing this out and making sure that it worked on various islands. And it seems like this is going to be our new tarantula hunting method. So if you still have some big loans you gotta pay off, and you know, it's Saturday night, tomorrow morning, the turnip lady is gonna be here. If you wanna pick up some big quantities of turnips, then tonight, go out and start tarantula farming. I decided to take a second flight of the night and I got a rare fruit island. Nice. I grabbed my peaches and I got out. Winky face emoji. Third island of the night was Bamboo Island. And a lot of people said that they love Bamboo Island for tarantula spawning. And a lot of people reached out to me and were like, hey, give it another chance. Give it another chance. I was so traumatized from the one time that I did do it and it didn't work that I just have been ignoring Bamboo Island. But it's amazing. It's amazing. It's the best island for tarantula farming. There is no pond. There is no rivers or lakes. So at this point, you're not going to have any water bugs. It's only going to be ground encounters. And there's three mole crickets all the time when it's not raining. So you're guaranteed two land spawns. And I averaged a tarantula every 61 seconds. So within about 45 minutes, I had an inventory full of tarantulas. So thank you for all the people who consistently left comments down below about do tarantula island, do tarantula island. My switch to sleep while I was still on that island because there were still more tarantulas that I had to get. I have not realized how good Bamboo Island is. People say it's their favorite and I immediately shot that down based on one bad experience when it was raining, but like, ugh. I was so wrong. Couldn't be more wrong. Right now, it's 8 a.m. on Saturday on Plays. Yay, today's announcements. Tomorrow, Plays bids a fond farewell to our dear friend, Walt. It's hard to say goodbye, but we wish him luck on his next big adventure. And that's it. That's the only announcement. I know that the first option when Walt spoke to me makes him stay, but I needed to clean out some space on my island anyways. So it is what it is. I'm not too sad, and while I did enjoy Walt, he wasn't one of my favorites, know what I mean? So, it, it, it's not the worst thing in the world. Yesterday we had CJ come visit, and we were vastly unprepared for that, but I have to say now we are super prepared for the next time Flick comes back. I have to say it's so weird seeing fossils on my walkway. Oh my god. I love everything in here. The bunk bed, the air conditioning unit, the water cooler, and the pink hourglass? Ah, uh, buying all this. I don't know how much money I've spent on these two. I know that there's a certain amount that you need to spend for them to upgrade the place and for them to carry cooler stuff. I don't know if there's a way to check on how much that has been already. So I'm just gonna be like very willy nilly with buying things from these two. <sighs> KK's here, it's Saturday. Sup pimpin? I'm in town for a spell, playing tunes before I hit the road again. I'm not taking requests right now. I don't. I just want to do my own thing. Let the music take me where I want to be. I'll start song requests around six. All right, cool. We have something to do at six p.m. I'm awake so early. The Able Sisters are not open yet. It's time for today's update on Villager Mountain. So here's Walt's house. He's moving out tomorrow. Kiki's house moved successfully right into this beautiful nook right here. And it looks like I can now continue down my waterfall. Perfect. Well, fantastic. This area has been cleaned up pretty nicely. I think it's looking pretty awesome. I did hear somewhere that you can put flowers on dirt paths. And I don't know if that has any truth to it. If so, that is definitely something I want to do. So like, I can use this dark dirt to look like, you know, hydrated dirt 
Oh my god, you can. This is a game changer. Yeah. That is like a- that is like a tight- that is a proper flower garden right there. So obviously I still need to decorate this area with some more things going down. Kiki needs her- her little cat tower thing. We need a bunch of stuff here, an outdoor patio set. And we also need to learn who's gonna move into, uh, to our- Sound asleep, do not wake me up, Walt. So sad to see Walt go. But, we get one more staircase today, and I think I wanna put it here and start working on the third floor. I'm now on a thing that I wanna collect all the cherry blossom recipes, and, uh, I wanna build all that stuff, cause I wanna increase the beautifulness of the Zen Bridge. By the way, so many people tune into the Zen Bridge episode, and I'm just like, huh. Neat. I think my favorite comment is one that was, uh, Austin in Animal Crossing, building a Zen garden. Everyone in Animal Crossing, building a Zen garden. <laughs> I mean, that sums up, that sums up Animal Crossing pretty well, don't you think? Uh, it's so nice here. This area makes me so happy. Oh boy. Also got quite a bit of mail. I just want to remind everyone that I can't add a lot of people on to my friends list. So like you, there's a very good chance you can't send me mail right now only because it's directly linked to my friends list. And my friends list is so long as it is that I always need to delete people in order to, you know, actually get someone in here. So it's pretty rough. So at this time I can't have anyone else send me presents other than members of the channel who I made my friend code public for them. I'm sorry, y'all. Liv, foosball table for arcade? Did you send me a foosball table for the arcade? Aqua, I wanted to add a poster to your collection. It's my favorite jock, bam. I thought you would enjoy him, have a good day. Thank you, Aqua. Liv, I keep getting these items that I won't use, but you might like one for the arcade. It's a pinball machine. How are people getting all these awesome arcade things? I hope you enjoyed the bonsai tree. Here's a little something for the arc. Oh my God, is everyone helping me furnish this arcade? There's an arcade seat for your tabletop cabinets like Pac-Man. Hey, it's CJ, the influencer from yesterday. You should have seen my partner work on this. Oh, it's my string fish. Nice. Jack, I hope you enjoy your shiny new elephant slide. I saw an elephant slide in the shop yesterday too. What do you like for this for the garden? Thank you, Jack. You know, that's clearly a pinball machine. Two pinball machines. That's fine. You need duplicates in an arcade. What if one of the machines is occupied? You don't want to have to wait there with your quarter. The arcade seat is dope. That's going to go right in front of the slot machine for, you know, gambling habits. <laughs> He's adorable. Gamers got to be hydrated. Uh... Until I have a better place, you're just gonna go in the corner here. Bam's poster. I don't know who Bam is, but he looks pretty cool. I'm gonna be putting posters of people on this side over here. Yeah. Slowly transforming this into a real arcade. Can I? Oh my God, I can actually sit here and play it. This isn't annoying. <laughs> I don't know why I find this so hysterical. Oh, why is it so small? It's half the size of a full string fish. I've been had. Tarantula gets upgraded to be on top of the dresser. String fish goes on string fish. Honeybee goes on the Dorado. Nice. So yesterday I found this lawn flamingo. He and the garden gnome are gonna hang out over here until I find some place better for them. And as far as the elephant slide, I kind of made this area for Timmy and Tommy. So I feel like they should they should have a little relaxation time with their brand new elephant slide. It was in the top corner of my inventory. I never opened it. There it is, foosball table. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you to everyone who sent in stuff for the arcade. I'm very excited for it. Our 53,000 bell tree sprouted. And nope. Nope, only 10,000 bells from planting 53,000. Great. Oh, but I did just get a balloon for 30,000, so that should help. I found an egg message in a bottle. Is this my last recipe that I need? It's the vanity. Oh, I already know the vanity. I didn't know that I knew this. <laughs> uh, if I had a dollar for every time I've said that in my life. Wait, do I now have all of the recipes? I don't have the arch. 
He'll give you the recipe for the Bunny Day bed the first time you talk to him. He'll give you the recipe for the Bunny Day arch on April 12th, the last day of the event. Oh, okay. So now we're getting- I mean, I didn't realize that I was done. <laughs> Except for the arch, which I need to wait eight more days. I finished this event in four days. Technically three, because I finished it yesterday, I guess. So what do I need more eggs of? After doing my daily chores for the day and digging up uh, the earth eggs that were spawning on my island, I came to 24 and I need somewhere between 10 and 14 more to build everything. And then it dawned on me that, oh, I could just use these miles tickets and then I'm like, or I could just wait. Like, I can't do anything until I get that arch anyways, right? I don't know. I'm not gonna waste my tickets during the day going and just getting these earth eggs. These water eggs, I'm gonna get those. Th that's gonna be the easiest thing ever to get. Plus, if you didn't know, on the very last day, Hippity Hoppity Bunny Boy is going to trade you three of whatever egg you have extra of for one of whatever egg you want. So, you could take this stack of 30 wood eggs and make it into 10 earth eggs, and you're good. Oh, and I got new floors and walls. I don't know how I feel about them yet. Let's see what the Able Sisters have today. Is that is that like a Tron outfit back there? And a crossing guard outfit? Let's go talk to Knuckles first. Um, you're Austin John, right? Wait, what just happened? Did Knuckles acknowledge me? I don't think I've ever heard you call a customer by name before, sis. Hush, Mabel. You know this is hard for me. Aw, she's such an introvert. Anyways, I'm Sable. I figured it was time you were introduced properly. You, you can go back to shopping now. Well, that's progress. It's called a cyber suit, and it's classified as a dress. It's a rabbit's hoodie. It's clearly a rabbit's hoodie. Wow, generic sports cap. Awesome. By the way, every single day I come in here and I do exactly this, and if, if the video is running long, then I cut this section out, but if it's not running long, then you see it. Wait, I just realized that's a handlebar mustache. I found a loft bed with desk. Is a loft bed a fancy way to say bunk bed? Yep, it sure is. Is this a placeable desk? Can I place something on this? Oh my god, I can. Okay, thank you. Finally. Wow, I did not shake that many trees in order to find this. Yeah, son. People are like, you're just wearing those glasses to hide if you get stung by a bee. And I'm not. They're just part of part of the disco outfit. Disco Tesco. Oi, oi. Oh, two furnitures. A floor light? Is that like an up light? Yes, it is. Oh my god. I'm gonna wait till nighttime, see what that looks like, and I'm probably gonna end up buying like a few hundred of those. Money just grows on trees. So do branches. Quick little progress update on Villager Mountain. We are going to be laying down this stone staircase right here, and I also have the plot marker for moving Julia's house. Well, okay, that works for me. And while I'm here, I can lay out where I want the path to be and everything else, and perfect. For my next grand project, which I talked about earlier in the video, I want to expand my museum Zen Garden. And it's small and adorable and quaint, and when I didn't have terraforming, it was perfect. But now I have so much more room on this island, and it's time to take advantage of it. My first step is to clear the area so I can work on it without interference. Next, I counted my width. It's a total of 26 wide. All I need to do is plug that into a Minecraft circle calculator, find my middle point, and from there, it was a matter of terraforming my second level to match the circle generated. Then I realized my museum is seven wide, not eight, so I needed to add one to the right side. In addition, I wanted my museum to sit back in additional space, so I tucked it into the cliffside a little bit better. After I made the circle, it was a matter of curving out the edges. Then the next step was to place down my large objects, and my crazy idea is I want to have two very large dinosaur fossils behind me. Like, I don't know what is available, but if I could have like a T-Rex and a Brontosaurus, I'd be, I'd be super happy. I don't have any matching parts yet, so for now, these six pieces are gonna be my placeholders. It looks hysterical and really bad. I laid down a three wide stone path going to the entrance, and I don't know if I want the stream to run through the area or in front, so for now I left the left half 
laid out to the side and the right half running through. And I'm sure I'm going to address this very shortly as far as where I'm moving this once the museum is moved. Next, I moved where the fossils were and I put stone underneath them because I wanted to put stone wall around them because they're fossils and they're delicate and I want to make sure they're safe and no stupid kids climb on top of it. Then I learned something magical. You could put two bamboo partitions on the top and bottom half of the same two spaces. It took some maneuvering to get it in there, but trust me, you can get it in there. I might end up changing these to the new floor lights that I just got, so I have to see how it looks on the museum tonight. Then I rebuilt the large bath area, except room here. I rebuilt the bamboo area, except room here. And I have no idea what a bamboo noodle slide is, but I made one anyways, and now it sits here. And yesterday I learned that you could put flowers on dirt pads. Well, you could also put trees on dirt pads. And these bamboo trees look so good. After I built the entranceway, I was able to get a clear picture on where I wanted the river to go, and it was just a matter of moving it around. And sadly, I can't finalize my design here until we move Blathers, which at the earliest convenience is going to be two days from now. So just a live Austin progress update on what's been going on so far. This is the area where the Zen Garden was. It can pretty much all fit on one screen. And now if we hop across the river that we have, oh, it's a blue balloon. I want that. Are you going to fall in the river? I guess I'm just that lucky. Anyways, here we have the whole entrance area, a small bamboo area on the dark dirt path. Once the museum is moved, I'm going to be able to place down the cypress bath bathtub, a large flower area and more bamboo. I put Stonehenge over here. I kept the old pixelated rocks because, well, I really like them. We have this outdoor bath over here. And then we have the fossils all lined up and ready to be matching fossils. I made two of the tall lamps again. We have the dual bamboo back here. Ah, oh, it just looks so perfect. And the museum is so ready to just be plopped down in this one exact space. I'm so happy that I planned that out with like floor markers ahead of time. Ah, oh, good move, Austin. I'm gonna have a small land bridge here possibly two of them. I haven't decided if I actually want to bring the, the Zen Garden down to this area. I might, I might not. I still really have no idea. But until tomorrow when we can choose to move the museum and more importantly, the day after the sixth, that's my birthday, we can't actually see what the museum is gonna be like back there. Oh wow, just having the, the fossils ominously in the background like that, that's hot. I realized that I was building a lot with vertical space and I like that I just made this all one big flat area. And I'm still messing around with the final design and stuff, but with my limited amount of DIY recipes, I feel like this is a really good, really good flow of everything. For that stream on the left, I'm actually gonna have that going up all the way to the third floor from that one originating pond. And uh, that is going to be part of the later part of the project. So we'll come back here on the sixth and then as well, We'll be able to decorate the upstairs area over here with proper trees and stuff and make it look uh, just all dapper. Oh, I'm sorry, flowers. And just all dapper. And I can't wait for that. But ah, oh, this area looks so nice, too. Once we find out who's going to move in, we can start decorating down here. Julia is going to be moving tomorrow morning. And I just, I just love the formatting. This terracotta pathway just really makes it. But guys, unfortunately, that is all the time I have for today. So I'm going to be wrapping this up. If you haven't done so, be sure to hit the like button down below. If you're loving the series and you aren't subscribed to my channel, actually, you know what? Just, just look at the subscribe button right now and just make sure you're subscribed. Because some people think you're subscribed and then you find out and you're not subscribed. So go and check that real quick. Great. Bye.